Howdy there once again, YouTube. I'm back once again. If you didn't already know, my name is Ben Ferriolo, and I'm dedicated to the responsible and accurate seismic monitoring of volcanic and tectonic hazard areas. First off, if you have not already, please bookmark my website. A link is provided under my email address in the description box below. It contains a great deal of information, including how to understand the many types of plots and charts people use, how to find, access, and analyze seismic data, and now how to find and access and analyze GPS data. And it also contains hundreds upon hundreds of seismic plots and images regarding a great many seismic events and swarms on many different pages. So today we do have a few different things to talk about. There have been some few other earthquakes in strange locations, especially there's an earthquake in France. Yeah, a very strange location. We'll take a look at that in just a little bit. There was a minor earthquake swarm at Yellowstone the other day, and I will cover a few other things in this video. We're just going to show some random seismic data for some random seismic events. And there's also an earthquake just in the past few hours in New Mexico. But it, at least it's stated in New Mexico. But when you look on the map, it's in Texas. So I don't know why they stated. Because it was like, what, 70 miles south-southwest of New Mexico or something like that. And I'm thinking, what? Why don't they just put Texas? You know, because it's in Texas. So we'll take a look at that right now. Okay, so here's all of the reported seismic activity since zero UTC on March 20th, 2019, which would be since March 19th, 2019 at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Yeah, it's, uh, we're a little bit behind from UTC and we, and UTC does not have daylight savings time, but we do. Uh, can we just get rid of daylight savings time already, guys? I think it's pretty much useless. Pretty useless. At least that's what I see. That's what I see. So first off, since zero UTC on March 20th, which was longer than a day ago, actually it is, I'm going to say probably a day and also three quarters of a day. So almost two days ago total. These are all the earthquakes, 433 reported for the world. That count is likely much higher. The largest earthquake to occur within this time period was a magnitude 6.3 in Vanuatu. Did I say that right? Or is it Vanuatu? Vanuatu or Vanuatu? I forget. No, I don't think it's Vanuatu. I think I said that wrong. Because someone a long time ago said, Ben, you said that wrong. And then they never told me how to say it. And I'm like, come on, give me some help. So 6.3 in Vanuatu, 119.0 kilometers in depth. Apparently multiple people reported feeling this event. Let's check out the event page real quick. How many people? Uh, seven people reported feeling this event. And it did have a strange moment tensor. Almost looks like a fried egg. Remember how sometimes the fried egg moment tensors can sometimes signal a collapse event or some type of inflation event or something. But this, I don't know, this still could be tectonic in nature. But with all the volcanic activity in Vanuatu or whatever it's called, I would not be surprised if that's related to some type of underground volcanic activity. And again, we did have some swarming at Yellowstone. We'll look at that in just a second. Let me click newest first. Let's go to Hawaii. So in the past two days, basically, there have only been nine reported earthquakes. Not that many, guys. Seismic activity has surprisingly, surprisingly calmed down. Here is the most recent webcam view of Kilauea Caldera and Halimamau Crater in Hawaii. Still looking like it's steaming pretty good. No steam plumes recently, but... You never know when those can occur again. So, and let, real quick, here we are at the real-time tremor map. Let me press refresh. Now, it looks like the ETS episode, it did seem like we were having an ETS episode. It was very short-lived, though. Other ETS episodes have been much larger and lasted much lo uh, longer. So, I don't know exactly what caused it. Maybe it was another ETS event. Maybe it was just a little burp before the main event. I don't know, but we should be seeing another ETS event. They said, what, every 12 to 15 months, right? Well, I'm pretty sure the last one was April or May of last year. So we are getting close to that time frame where we could see another ETS episode very soon. But of course, there's still very little known about those because they were discovered, what, 2002 or something like that. So we've only had about a decade and a half of research and that's you know that's a good amount of time but still we could use a lot more okay let's go to Yellowstone just real quick and then I'll talk about to, uh, some of the other seismic activity now what is this let's see that's very interesting at Old Faithful maybe there's a big geyser going off let's see uh, it's frozen uh oh it's frozen uh oh come on now remember, uh, the Old Faithful 
webcam is just slightly to the north of the seismograph. The seismometer, the seismograph, the seismic station, all mean the same thing. Uh, it's farther behind this camera. Like, it's farther to the south. I think it's behind the visitor center, I believe. It's behind it. Okay, so in, we're not seeing anything right now on the webcam. Not seeing much. Seeing a little bit of shaking, but it looks like that does, there there is some wind. Because this is pushing that way, but I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But I just want to show you something where you should always do. You see, oh my god, that's so crazy! And then you go here, and there's not really anything on the closest seismic stations at all. Yep, at all. Borehole 208, now, has been seeing these very strange mid to high range frequency long period events. And they are not sure, they're, only, they're shown on LKWY because really LKWY is right above Borehole 208. It's like right next to it. Um, and we already covered in a video a long time ago. If you want to check it out, go to my website, go to the How To drop down menu, and click Read Spectrograms, Seismic Plots, and More. And on that page, <clears throat> um, you will find a bunch of different information on how to read the different seismic plots and charts. But there's also a video on that page about how to understand the boreholes and how they work. Um, remember, I'm not a professional, I'm not an expert at this, but from what I have seen and with my knowledge of how seismic waves propagate away from their source, especially the seismic waves from a very weak negative 0.2 earthquake, which, as I showed, a negative 0.2 earthquake, which has less strength than possible surface noise on the boreholes. The negative 0.2 showed up on many of these surrounding stations, and it was a negative 0.2. And then I also showed on there how the amplitude counts of the possible surface noise on the boreholes far exceeded that of the negative 0.2 earthquake. But So the negative 0.2 earthquake was weaker than the surface noise, right? But the negative 0.2 earthquake showed up on surrounding stations, but the surface noise didn't. So obviously that shows, it with everyday analysis, obviously that shows it is possible. It is possible to see surface noise on a borehole, but you must remember, it minimizes surface events greatly. But it depends on the surface events, the distance of the station to the surface events, the type of surface event, the frequency of this, the strength of the surface event. I mean, there are so many factors at play here, but it's very easy. If you look at surrounding stations and just know that a negative 0.2, I mean, are you going to be concerned about a negative 0.2 earthquake? No. I mean, unless it's with a swarm of thousands and thousands and thousands of them, yeah, I'd be concerned. But one zero, negative 0 0.2 earthquake shows up on surrounding stations. So that's why you always must look. When looking at seismic data and these online charts, which I suggest you actually analyze the data via swarm or another program, um, it, you just need to check on the surrounding stations to see if it shows. And usually you need seismic analysis programs, but you can easily tell. Let's go to the closest seismic station, YLA. Borehole 2, oh, whoa, whoa. Borehole 208, YLA. Borehole 208, YLA. Borehole 208 and YLA. Now look it up here. Notice how there was an earthquake swarm. Yes, there was a Yellowstone. Notice how they do coincide, except the timing is a little bit off, but you can obviously see. Okay, but you have to use a seismic analysis program. I really think you do. And I am getting off track. And by the way, this right here, let's see, what time? 15.30, let's see, let's see, 15.30, I'm going to say 15.33. Check this out. So about 15.33 UTC, there's this seismic signature that was detected. And it was this right down here. A magnitude 3.1. Oh, no, it's not. Never mind. I'm wrong. I am wrong. Write that down. Write it down. <laughs> 15.30. 1533, so we do have an event right there that, to the best of my knowledge, is not showing. 1533, it would not show right there. Okay, so, let's see, 1533, 1533, so I don't know, let's see, I do not see one for 1533. Let's see, let's scroll down. 16, 16, 15, 15... Aha! Magnitude 3.1 in Montana, near Clinton, Montana. Struck at 14.0 kilometers in depth. Nobody reported feeling it, but according to the shake map, it does. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, why isn't it showing anything? Huh, that's strange. Oh, yeah. We should have seen maybe a couple people feel it, but it was not that crazy of an earthquake. Uh, but a Yellowstone, I do want to take a look at this swarm just real fast, and we will do that right now. 
And let's go look at the earthquakes they have reported for this earthquake swarm. It occurred in between Seismic Station YTP and Borehole 944. According to the P-Wave arrivals, they did occur closer to the promontory, which is where YTP is, which is right here. Borehole 944 is right here. And you could tell it occurred almost, almost directly between the two, but just slightly closer to YTP. Okay, let's look at the reported earthquakes of this swarm, shall we? It was not major by any counts, but it is a little bit larger than the sum of we have seen in the past few months. Only eight have been reported for this earthquake swarm. First started with a magnitude 0.9, two 0.9s actually, at 2.6 kilometers and at 3.3 kilometers. Then we had a 1.0 at 4.3 kilometers in depth, 0.8 at 9.2, got much deeper right there, that's interesting. 0.9 at 2.1 kilometers, a 1.4 3.0 kilometers, and a 1.0 at 7.5 kilometers, and finally 1.7 at 3.8 kilometers in depth. So the depths are all over the place, guys. Usually you see the depths constrained between maybe 2 to 4 kilometers in depth um, difference between each other, but this is like, uh, this is much different. I mean, of course we see this, like this isn't anything too major, but I thought that was very interesting. So let's go and do Borehole 944, since that was apparently the second closest seismic station to this event. Let's see, when did it start? It started at about, let's say, let's start from 19 to 19. Okay, so let's do from the 20th to 19 to 19 for the 21st and click download and it'll download, download, excuse me. Now let's check it out in the Seismic Program Swarm. Here we are in the Seismic Program Swarm with the data stream added from Borehole 944, short period vertical in the PBO network, PB network actually, but it is PBO for Plate Boundary Observatory. Persistent rescale off, oh, the overlap is set to 95 and the Butterworth filter is not set because we don't need a filter because it's a short period station. So you can see the swarm here. You can see the main burst of swarming occurred in this area right here. They had, then we had a two, uh, I'm going to say two, three, four, five maybe stragglers afterwards. Most recent data stream right here as of 11.45 a.m. Pacific time, March 21st, 2019. Not seen much. Not seen much at all except for this right here, which could have been the New Mexico earthquake, maybe. But I am not expecting the New Mexico earthquake to really show up that well. And we do have a little increase in low frequency background activity right here. Notice that, but they do have some mid-range frequencies as well. And it's not really showing up as much on the surrounding station, so I don't know what that could be as of the past few hours. But I'm getting off track. Let's talk about this swarm right here. Now I'm going to zoom out real quick. And let's see, let's see, let's see, where did it start? So it started, I'm going to say, right about 2243 UTC on the 20th. So in between the 20th and the 21st. Now, I'm just going to do a rough count of earthquakes. I'm not trying to get an exact estimate of how many earthquakes are in the swarm. I usually do that by using the P-Wave cross-correlation method by using the seismic program waves and uh, five to six of the surrounding seismic stations to the swarm. And I'm going to do that later when I actually create an analysis page for this swarm. But I'm just going to do a rough count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Another rapid fire swarm at Yellowstone Lake. Not a surprise. We see those from time to time. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Dominant lower frequencies. They're not low frequency earthquakes, but they definitely have some dominant lower frequencies. Uh, what, what did I say? It was at 10, right? 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, maybe 16. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, very tiny, 27, 28, 29, those are definitely two earthquakes, and then another two right here, actually, I'm not sure, so I'm just going to say a total of 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, maybe 36, 37, but let's just say 36, uh, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41. Actually, I don't know. 40, 41. Let's check. Yep, those are definitely two separate events. Uh, 40, 41. Let's go forward. Little tiny, tiny aftershocks. Little teeny, tiny guys. And then there's 42, 43, 44. Yeah, so the rough count. And then there's a few other aftershocks throughout the day. Okay. So we do see a rough count of maybe around 40 to 50 earthquakes, no more than 55, and they were all very, 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 very tiny. Most of them. 
I believe the largest reported event, let's see, the largest one was reportedly in magnitude 1.7 at 3.8 kilometers in depth at 916 UTC on the 21st. 916, that's this one right here. This is the magnitude 1.7 that I just showed. That's it right there. And looking at it, very interesting. They look a little bit more interesting than usual. They look a little more bulbous. <laughs> you notice that? They're bulbous looking. Even these ones. Maybe some, I believe these are connected to the same process. Now, the rapid fire swarms, if you really are interested in seeing the past ones, and this is minor by all counts. I mean, you should go see, go to my website, go to the seismic events drop down menu, and click West Thumb Yellowstone Energetic Events or whatever it's called, and go look at all the swarms there. Now, the most important swarms are not listed on that page, but right at the beginning of the page, there are links that uh, show dates just click one of the dates and it's, it'll show you the seismic plots and images to many of those different types of swarms there have been some pretty major ones guys and we have not seen a major one since what was it since maybe like six more than six months ago guys so i am expecting another one to happen soon again uplift is really not occurring at yellowstone much right now it, it's seeing a battle just take it as a battle is taking place, guys. It's battling between uplift and subsidence. So we will have to wait and see where that goes. My monthly volcano update will be out uh, after the month has ended. And I will show the GPS deformation charts there and show any changes that have occurred. So let's move on to a couple other events. And I'm going to be making an analysis page in the next few days for this swarm. So I'm not done with this swarm yet, guys. Don't worry. But let's move on to something else real quick. Okay, so other than these earthquakes that were reported for Yellowstone, again, they're only reporting eight. Um, they reported the largest ones, basically. There are some other ones, probably around 1.0, they didn't report. But the unreported ones, mainly probably around 0 0.1 to negative 0 0.3. Very tiny, very tiny. But again, altogether, for earthquakes of all sizes, all microquakes, there were probably anywhere from 40 to 55. Still have not done an exact count of that swarm. I will do a more accurate count later. But that's just a rough estimate. Just a rough estimate. Uh, let's zoom out. It looks like there was an extra earthquake up there near Maple Creek. And then one even farther. Then Montana saw one. Okay, and then recently, they said New Mexico saw an earthquake. And I was like, oh, another earthquake in New Mexico. See? Look. Look at this. Loving New Mexico. If you just looked at that, you'd be like, oh, it occurred in New Mexico, right? Look. It's south of the border. It's in Texas. Come on, why couldn't they use a city from Texas and say that since it's literally in Texas? I don't know why they wouldn't do that. But let's look at the recent seismic data, shall we? The magnitude 3.1 at 14.6 kilometers in depth is the most recent of three earthquakes that have occurred. Another 3.0 and another 3.0, both supposedly at 5.0 kilometers in depth. I'm thinking the magnitudes could be correct, but the depths may be wrong. That's very strange seeing two similar magnitude earthquakes occurring at the same exact depth very strange but let's go see what the closest seismic station is to this event it's looking like nobody felt this earthquake surprisingly i mean we've seen what over a hundred people feel a magnitude 1.1 before i believe that was in pennsylvania in one of my older videos oh god what was it yeah i think it was the magnitude 1.1 near pennsylvania or was it north carolina oh, it doesn't matter right now uh, but it was a magnitude 1.1 in hundreds over a hundred people reported feeling the earthquake and i thought that was very strange and then this one at 3.1 isn't felt at all i don't know seismic waves are strange and they can do some very weird things guys okay the closest seismic station according to usgs is a broadband station zero zero location code pb11 in the tx network let's check it out now all right here we have the data stream from station pb11 in the tx network which is a broadband station with zero zero location code I have persistent rescale turned off. The overlap is set to 95 for the spectrogram as usual. And there is a filter. I have added a 0.6 hertz high pass filter to get rid of those pesky background microseisms. Now this station here is the closest station to this magnitude 3.1 at 14.6 kilometers in depth. But it is not the closest station for these two earthquakes down here. I'm going to see if we can see these on these stations as well. So it's the closest station for this one, but not for these two. Now let's see, these two occur, let's see, 2022 and 1053, both on different dates, the 20th and the 21st. So the 20th said, whoa, oh man, I cannot believe I forgot it. At 2022 on the 20th, 2022, where are you? 2022, 2022, 20, oh. 
What is that right there? Look at that. Okay, 2022. I am not seeing the earthquake. These actually right here, I those could be the surface waves from the earthquake. Let's see. Let's just see. Yep, 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 dominant lower frequencies, yeah, here we go, it starts right here, guys, right here, that's where the earthquake showed up from the first 3.0, started right about here, I'm gonna say, and those definitely are the surface waves, definitely, for sure, let's check out the dominant frequencies, and the, those frequencies are a little too low, though, for surface waves from an earthquake that close, I don't know, See, guys, I'm still new to all this. I know I've been doing this for six months, and I do have a good amount of info and data and stuff like that. But, guys, there are still a lot of things I really don't understand. I mean, it's pretty crazy. Okay, so the next one occurred at 10, right? All right, right? Am I right? Am I right? Let's see, let's see, let's see. 10.53 UTC on the next date. 10.53 UTC, 10.53 UTC on the next date. Yep, here it is right here. Apparently, this is another magnitude 3.0. And here it is. Again, we do see those strong surface waves from this earthquake, just like we saw in the previous magnitude 3.0, which occurred what? I'm gonna say maybe 10 hours earlier, something like that. And that's it. Let's check out the dominant frequencies of the magnitude 3.0. Remember, we still have not looked at the other one yet. Again, strong dominant lower frequencies of the surface waves, guys. I don't know why that is. It, the surface waves usually should not be stronger than the earthquake itself. I mean, I guess sometimes that could probably happen. You know, I'm not an expert, and I have seen that happen before, but I think that's very strange. But let's go check out the recent earthquake, which is a 3.1 at 14.6 kilometers in depth, right here near the border of Texas and New Mexico at 1616 UTC. Okay, let's see if we can find it amongst all this soup. Look at all this background noise. Oh my god, guys. Look at this. Look at that. Definitely not anything seismic. I highly doubt because usually seismic long period events always have, even if it's not a low frequency tremor, guys. Even if it's not a long period low frequency tremor, it still has, you know, some strength at the lower frequency band, but we don't see anything here. Actually, the strength started about 5 hertz. So, I don't know what this is, guys. But let's go amongst this soup soupy soupy and let's see 16 16 right 16 16 oh there it is right there okay this is the magnitude 3.1 at 14.6 kilometers in depth right here and let's turn on the dominant Ooh, oh 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 log power off and there's the dominant frequencies let's do log frequency off and there we go okay dominant frequencies remaining between 5 hertz and 10 hertz the strongest frequency being about oh the stupid recorders in the way there we go being at about seven hertz about seven hertz or so is the strongest frequency of that event so that's it for new mexico and texas actually did not no earthquakes in new mexico it did occur in, in just texas even though it says new mexico now let's zoom all the way out now there are way too many earthquakes to take a look at all in one video if i looked at all of them we'd be sitting here forever and ever and ever and ever okay first i'm gonna look at this one right here now of course earthquakes do happen up here alaska is very close again up here in katkovic i believe that's what it's called up in northern alaska back in late 2018 around august i'm i am doing an analysis page on the swarm by the way a huge earthquake swarm broke out with two magnitude 6.0 earthquakes multiple fours some fives multiple threes i mean it literally looked like it did not look tectonic in my opinion guys it definitely looked like there's some type of dike intrusion going on right up here a major one possibly a new volcano or something that's just my take that's just my preliminary take on the event i could be way off but i just want you to know that's what i believe so we have an earthquake all the way over here in northern Canada in a strange location, magnitude 4.6 at 2.6 kilometers in depth. Now up here there are very little people. This was a good sized earthquake at a shallow depth, so if there were, if there was a high uh, concentration of population up there, they would have felt it. There would have been a lot of felt reports, but population is very sparse up there, so I'm betting nobody reported feeling it. Wouldn't be surprised if someone did, though. You know, dog sledding or something. The closest station is a temporary station, F31M, in the temporary network. So let's go download that data and look at it right now. Here we have the data stream from station F31M in the TEA network. It's broadband station, broadband vertical. 
and there is no location code given. Persist to rescale offset overlap to 95, and since it is a broadband station, I want to get rid of those pesky, pesky background microseisms. Do a 0 0.6 hertz high pass filter. Let's go forward. Here's the magnitude 4.6, which struck. It, whoa. Oh, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, you guys seeing this? Are you guys seeing this? Well, of course you are. Of course you're seeing this. Look at that. Let's see, 10 seconds, 10 seconds. From here to here is 10 seconds. That's some... Wow. Let's zoom all the way out. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take the filter off. I'm going to take the filter off and see... Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Look at that. Let's add a filter, shall we? Let's do 0 0.1 hertz filter. Now let's do a 0 0.3 hertz filter. Now let's do and go back to a 0 0.6 hertz filter, but strengthen it just a little bit. Wow, guys, look at this. This is the magnitude 4.6 at 2.6 kilometers in depth. I believe that's what it was in northern Canada in a strange. Let's go look at that strange location just real quick. Uh, just real quick. Yep. 4.6 at 2.6. That's where it is, and it has some strange dominant lower frequencies. We'll take a look at the spectrogram in just a second. I just want to look at the satellite, see if there are any volcanoes in this area. Now, USGS does not have any volcanoes reported for this area. I don't think Canada does either. But with the history of the area, guys, I would not be surprised if this area is volcanic. It looks very strange up here. I don't know what could be up here, guys. I'm not an expert of geology or satellite geology really you know if you guys spot any volcanoes or anything like look these could be craters but those could just be from something else i don't know uh maybe meteor impacts or something i don't know very interesting so that's the location of the magnitude 4.6 at 2.6 kilometers in depth with some strange absolutely phenomenally strange strange lower frequencies look at that um, I'm going to turn the spectrogram on real quick. Look at those dominant lower... Okay, okay. We're doing spectroplot. We're doing it. Okay. So, starts at about 0 0.45 hertz and ends at about 0 0.82 hertz. Definitely far below. So, 0 0.4 hertz to 0 0.9 hertz, basically. And look at how strong that is. The other frequencies of the earthquake are completely hidden completely hidden by the spectra plot because the dominant lower frequencies that are occurring in this area are occurring much stronger much stronger than the frequencies over here i would expect these back here to be surface waves i have no clue why it would be like this to me this looks somewhat similar to an explosion but i highly doubt it's an explosion guys i mean at least man-made i highly doubt it's a human explosion if you know what i mean I don't know. What do you guys think is going on in northern Canada? That is very strange. Look at that earthquake again. We have the clear P and S wave arrivals, and then we should see the surface waves, right? Well, there's no reason that these should be surface waves. They are so strong and last for so long. Look at this. And they are harmonic, meaning they have perfect... Now, remember, harmonic doesn't mean it's related to magma. There are things that, are, that can look harmonic. Harmonic just means regularly spaced. And some teleseisms, actually, global distant earthquakes. This is not teleseism because we're looking at it on the coast of Seismic Station. But sometimes teleseisms can have harmonic characteristics in the waveforms because of how it propagates away from the source and travels around the world. But it's very interesting. It does have harmonic characteristics right here, which I was thinking at first could be surface waves, but I don't think so. I don't think so. Again, there it is right there. Completely wacky, weird weird earthquake dominant lower frequencies right here do not know what that could be caused by so let's move on to something else let's go back turn grayscale back on i just want to show two more earthquakes just real quick and then we'll be done you know this has been a long video guys thanks for bearing with me if you have been you know there's always a parts section in the description box below if you ever want to skip to a certain part you uh, guys, just an update about the magnitude 4.6 in Canada. Another one just struck, another earthquake, and I want you to take a look at the waveforms in just a second. Right now is about an hour and a half to two hours after I just made the video. So uh, this is going to cut off and go back into the video in just a second. 
but I really just wanted to put this in here just so that you guys have the most up-to-date information. Let's zoom into this area right over here. I noticed that another earthquake did strike the same exact location as the magnitude 4.6. Notice this. Just barely, just slightly, I'm saying maybe less than a mile to the east-southeast of the original epicenter. That does not look like the depth was constrained correctly. Remember the magnitude 4.6 occurred at 2.6 kilometers in depth. We already looked at that. The magnitude 4.0, which just recently struck in the past hour as of 1.34 p.m. Pacific time, March 21st, 2019. Let's click on it. Doesn't look like anybody felt it or anything. I doubt they have a moment tensor, but let's just check the event page anyways just real quick. So again, 4.0 at 10 kilometers in depth. Again, I do not believe the depth is correct. They state it is correct, plus minus 2.0 kilometers. That's what they say, but I'm still thinking it's much different than that. I don't know. Again, the closest seismic station to these two earthquakes is F31M in the TA network. Coincidentally, I already have F31M in the TA network. Just downloaded the most recent data. Persistent rescale off 95 overlap. Do a high pass filter of 0.6 hertz. All right. Let's go forward. Okay, so here's the original 4.6. Remember how we talked about this, that it was just absolutely crazy? To me, it was about an hour and a half ago that I talked about this. But for you guys, it was probably just about one minute ago. Um, yeah, look at this. Again, I'm sorry. I'm still freaking out about this earthquake. It's so crazy. I've never seen one like that before. Okay, getting off topic. Moving on, there's some very weird events going on here and again remember recently the oh hello and then they had another aftershock unreported let's see 2000 amplitude count and this is going to 30,000 maybe i'm going to say down here this one was like a 1.5 maybe pretty deep the pns wave arrivals are very separated i'm thinking this is greater than 10 kilometers in depth at least that's what i'm thinking i'm not great at constraining depths guys i'm not great at that but that's just a guess. Notice how all of them, the, the two smaller aftershocks, have strange surface waves, very similar to the event up here. Notice that. Well, here's the most recent magnitude, 4.0. Look at this. Look at this once again. Surprisingly, they are not stronger than the earthquake. The magnitude 4.6 up here was stronger. This, I mean, these low-frequency events were... Uh, yeah, sorry, I didn't mean low frequency events. The low frequency section of this, I don't even know if these are surface waves, so I don't know what to call these. I do not think these are surface waves, in my opinion. I don't know what they could be caused by. To me, it looks like a nuke went off. It kind of looks like an explosion, kind of like what we see with the mining explosions in eastern Wyoming, and sometimes the nuclear explosions in North Korea. But again, Notice how these were stronger than the earthquake, but here they're not as strong as the earthquake. Let's take the filter off. See it completely unfiltered. Look at these dominant lower frequencies, guys. Again, this is the most recent earthquake to occur, the magnitude 4.0, in this area. And we do have about five, six events that have occurred in the past 12 hours or so. I do not know what is going on. Look at that. Uh, yeah. Okay, so let me know what you guys think about that. The rest of this video is about to continue in just a sec. Let's look at the spectrogram. Look at that strange lower frequency. Notice how the frequency seemed to start to barely rise, just barely. These look very similar. Very similar to the, um, oh, what were they? In southeast Wyoming, or no, is it southwest Wyoming, near Green River, that crazy swarm. If you go to my website, go to the Seismic Events drop-down menu, click Quake Swarms. And then I believe it is on there, the one near Green River. I believe I do have it on there. So again, just an update, guys. We do have another one showing strange, strange lower frequency. Very harmonic, very regularly spaced. Almost perfectly regular, actually. Let's look at one of these. Let's see from here to here. These are almost perfectly regular. Very interesting, guys. Look at that. Very interesting. Okay, so what is going on up there? Is there a new volcano? Is there a new fault breaking open, or is this a collapse event? Could this be another collapse event? Uh, apparently, the first note of the, the P wave, the first energy that arrives on a seismic station, is going down. Remember, this is vertical, so any ground motion heading, um, heading up towards the surface would be going up, and uh, any ground motion going down into the ground would be going down, if you guys know what I'm trying to say. Sorry, guys. I just saw this just a second ago. Again, crazy magnitude 4.0 and crazy magnitude 4.6.
what is going on in northern Canada. You let me know. And now let's continue the video. You want. So we had a 3.1 Montana. Then they had another 3.0 in Utah. Utah has been seeing it. No, wait, never mind. That's Nevada. Never mind. A 3.5 in Nevada. But Utah and Nevada has been seeing a very interesting increase in seismic activity as of late. Then we had a 5.5 in Tanzania. Look at that. 5.5 at 22 kilometers in depth. Why don't we go look at this and then we'll look at the France earthquake. Okay. Wow. Wacky. Wacky moment tensor. Look at that. I actually don't think I've ever seen any moment tensor that looks like that in my life. That is very strange. Very strange indeed. 18 people reported feeling it. I bet you anything, a lot more people actually felt it. Let's go to origin. Click phases. Let's look at the closest seismic station. Click arrival time. Dang, that really does suck. The closest seismic station is 104.9 arrival time seconds away. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Distance 7.35 degrees. That's pretty far away, guys. So they have no close seismic stations really at all. But again, this was the closest seismic station, so we are going to be forced to using it. This occurred on the 21st at 9.15 UTC in Tanzania in Africa. Here we are back in the seismic program swarm with the data from the closest seismic station to the 5.5 of Tanzania. Sadly, the closest seismic station is many, 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 many miles away. But we could still get a good look at this magnitude. What was it? 5.5, I believe it was. Station MBAR in the II network. Location code 10, broadband vertical. Turn persistent rescale offset overlap to 95 on the spectrogram. Since it's a broadband station, we're going to add a 0.6 hertz high pass filter. Looks like they have had some other earthquakes in this area as of late, possibly foreshadowing the magnitude 5.5. They could be uh, four shocks. Remember, four shocks are very real. Many, many, many four shocks occurred before the magnitude 9 struck in Japan. Just know, though, four shocks are not required for a major earthquake. The major earthquakes can just appear out of nowhere for no reason, it seems. Another earthquake right here. Probably coming from the same area, too. Another microquake right there. Another... Uh, nope, never mind. That's surface noise. And the magnitude 5.5 is right down here. Let me scroll down real quick. Here it is right here. Do we see any dominant lower frequencies? We do right here. Very interesting. Kind of like the Canada earthquake. This earthquake lasted a long time. Notice the frequency changes. Notice this line right here. I thought that was very interesting. Let me zoom in. This earthquake lasted a long time. Let's see. From right here, that's 917, 27, 923, 21. What is that? Five, six minutes maybe? It is a long, long lasting earthquake. Uh, we do have some dominant lower frequencies, but that is probably because of the surface waves from this event, because it lasted a very long time. Good strength earthquake, too. Might have been a little larger than a magnitude 5.5, but it's pretty close. Again, dominant lower frequencies where we should see it. And then there were a few other aftershocks throughout the day. And that's it for Africa, for Tanzania. I know, isn't this weird? In the comfort of your own home, you can see what's going on on the ground in Tanzania. <laughs> That's why I love seismic stations, guys. I love the freedom. I mean, I, I had no clue that these possibilities even existed six months ago or longer than six months ago. I mean, it just blows my mind. You can literally analyze volcanoes exactly how the professionals do, kind of like they did with Mount St. Helens and with Kilauea. And you could come up with your own interpretations by looking at the same data that they analyze, which I think is pretty cool. And I think we should have citizen scientists. We should, because it keeps the professionals accountable, doesn't it? Because the professionals hold a lot of power in their hands. They really do. Now, let's go to the last event that I wanted to look at in this video. Again, thank you for bearing with me. Let's zoom out and go to world. Anything else? I'm going to quick refresh and see if anything else has occurred since I've been recording. No, let's check the HBO webcam, see if anything has changed since I've been recording. No, nothing's really changing at all right there. Anything with the webcam at Yellowstone? No, everything's the same. Real-time tremor? Any ETS episodes starting? Nope, nothing. Okay, oh, well, let's go to Yellowstone. Any unreported events that have occurred since I started recording? Uh, nope, not yet. Okay, so we looked at many different earthquakes today. The earthquake swarm at Yellowstone, some down near New Mexico and Texas. Then the magnitude... 4.6 at 2.6 kilometers in depth in Canada, which I suggest if you 
are able to analyze seismic data, you should go analyze this too. Very strange earthquake. Very, very strange. Then we had a magnitude 5.5 in Tanzania. And the last I wanted to look at is this right here. They have reported it to be a magnitude 3.9 in France at 10 kilometers in depth. Again, when you see exactly 10 kilometers in depth, it could be right, it could be wrong. Whenever they cannot constrain the depth, and USGS has no idea what the depth is at all, they put 10 kilometers. But then again, earthquakes can occur at exactly 10 kilometers in depth, obviously. So sometimes you just don't know. <laughs> so let's click on the event page for the magnitude 3.9 in France supposedly at 10 kilometers in depth. Again, USGS does not operate over here. Again, they do report earthquakes throughout the world, but they do not operate in the European Union, in that area. 17 people reported feeling it. If this was in the United States, I bet many more people would have reported it. Very strange location. Let's look at the location that it struck. The yellow star is where it struck. I'm going to zoom all the way out for you. All the way out. So there's France. There, what is that? What's that line? Is that still France? Oh, that's just on the on the map. There's Spain, Portugal. We have France right here. We got Germany up here. Netherlands, Belgium. So in west, in southwestern France. So made it to 3.9 in southwestern France. Bordeaux, all the way down here, somewhat near the coast. And again, I do not know if they have any faults in this area. They probably do. Uh, it take a little bit of research to do. Someone else could probably do that. I just want to take a look at the seismic data. Let's go forward. Let's press origin and see what the closest seismic station was to this 3.9. Arrival time up. Let's see. The closest station was in the CA network, CEST, broadband vertical, no location code. Let's check that out now. Just a heads up, guys. If you are trying to get this seismic data from the closest seismic station, I had to go to the French seismic data download site uh yeah it took me a little while to find this guys i'm still a little confused if it worked but it obviously did let's go to swarm close this out close file open the most recent file that i just downloaded and see if it works cest in the ca network and gee looked like it worked guys very interesting i love finding seismic data from strange locations again this is the closest seismic station and let's see, let's go, distance is only 2.97 degrees, that's not too bad. 47.2 seconds arrival time, so we do, we will get a good look. We will get a good look, since it's a broadband station, I'm going to do overlap 95 and set a high pass 0 0.6 hertz filter, just real quick. And here we go, here's the magnitude 3.9, which supposedly occurred at 10 kilometers in depth in France, only going up to about... 7,000 amplitude count on here. Dominant load mid-range frequencies. Let's check out the spectral plot, shall we? Log power off. Dominant frequencies, uh, I'm going to say, are between about 2.4 hertz to 6.6 .6 hertz. Not a low-frequency earthquake. No actual dominant lower frequencies, but I'm going to say more mid-range frequencies. Very interesting, because... Uh, Starts to go down, starts to weaken right about 12.7 hertz. And you can actually fully see that on the spectrogram. Let's see again. Starts to weaken about 17 hertz. So yeah, very close. And that's the 3.9 in France. I was able to get the data from France, guys. From the comfort of my own home. Woohoo! I love seismic data. I love these options, guys. And then right here, it does look like there was... Oh. Oh. 15, oh, that's from uh, Vanuatu, I believe, or Vanuatu, or however you say it, I believe. That's definitely a teleseason. Let's check out the dominant frequencies, shall we? E I don't know. Uh, could be a teleseism, might be not. I don't know. Let's use the spectrogram and see if there are any other events throughout the day. Log power on. Let's go here. Let's see if there are any aftershocks that we can notice. There, Right here, this is likely an aftershock. This looks definitely like a very teeny tiny aftershock. Keep going forward, 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 forward. Still not seeing anything at all. Not really much. Not really much. So it's pretty much just the magnitude 3.9 in France. And that's pretty much it. We went through a lot of different stuff today, guys. A lot of different stuff. I hope you enjoyed. And again, this month is going to be pretty busy. I'm going to try to get my volcano update out there as usual. Uh, near the 5th of every month. That's what I try to do. But again, that might be late as well. 
This past, past month is getting pretty busy. It's just, it's been getting pretty crazy lately, guys. Life is just throwing you some curveballs sometimes, huh? Life is like a box of chocolates, I guess. Or is it life is a box of chocolates? Or was? People are so confused over that, and it's like the simplest thing ever. I don't know. <laughs> well, I hope you guys all have a great day. Um, if anything else major occurs by the time I upload this video, obviously, I'll probably do another video or blog post. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, got something in my throat. Um, remember to always check my website. I have multiple blogs on my website. It's not just the Seismo blog that I put data on, guys. I have multiple blogs in both Seismic Events drop-down menus, I believe. Just go monitor my pages, see if anything ever changes, because sometimes I do upload research on there before I do a video. So if you want to be up to date on some of the seismic events, I'm not able to cover them all, but if you want to be up to date on some of them, then just monitor my website. Or you could do all this stuff yourself. You could use my website in the how-to drop-down menu, all the different pages on there, to learn how to do all this yourself so that you don't have to go through me. You don't have to watch my videos. Really, it's my ultimate aim. Don't watch my videos. Do you hear YouTubers saying that? <laughs> no, because guess what? I don't ask for donations. Look at my look at my description box. You could tell a lot about a YouTuber about uh, by looking at their description box. Is it mainly resources to find things and things to help you? Or is it mainly donation links? Yeah, I mean, there's nothing, guys. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with donations. There's nothing wrong with that. Some people use this to make a living, and that's not bad. That's completely fine. But I'm just saying, I don't know, I'm just saying I don't do donations, I don't do AdSense. Maybe someday I might do AdSense on my videos if it's worth it. But right now I don't even get nearly enough views to do AdSense at all. I get, what, like 20 cents a month or something, <laughs> something like that. That really wouldn't help much. So I hope you guys all had a great day. God bless, and I will be back soon. See you later.